Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we are looking at the Asus Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 990FX AIM3 Plus motherboard. Here's the box. Again, this is the Asus Sabertooth 990FX R2.0, not the first version. Up here right on the box, Asus lets you know they back this board up with a 5 year warranty. That's fantastic. That's because of the high quality tough so the ultimate force components. Right now at the time of this video all AMD FX processors are fully supported and this board also allows Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire X. Of course it also fully supports the latest operating system Windows 8. On the back of the box you'll get more details on the features but everything is kept very simple here, I like that. This box has a door or however you may want to call it, but you basically get more information on the special features. But let's open this box up and see what's inside. Alright, right on top is a plastic protection, which I'll remove. Then there's the motherboard to which we will get in a moment. For the accessories you get the certificate of reliability, so you know high quality components are used all over the board. Then of course there is also a thick user guide with lots of information along with the driver CD. But I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from the ASUS website, especially if you decide to use Windows 8. This here is a tough series motherboard 5 year warranty notice, basically again mentioning you have 5 long years of warranty on the board. That's the quick start guide in different languages. And that's weird, it looks like a user guide page, who knows, maybe ASUS forgot to add that page when it comes to the SATA modes. For the people that like stickers, well, you get a nice tough inside sticker for your case. Now to the more standard stuff. Here's the IO shield or how Asus calls it, Q shield. It looks very nice actually and it should also protect against static interference. You also get a Nvidia SLI bridge for a two-way configuration, but unfortunately there's no crossfire bridge included. Here are 4 CD 6 gigabit per second cables and that's very nice to see. Last but not least for the accessories you get a Q connector kit, one for the front panel and the other one for the USB header. You simply plug your cables into these connectors and then simply to the motherboard. That's a great idea actually and can save time when you're building the PC together. But let's get to the motherboard, which is inside an antistatic bag. I'll quickly take it out so we can take a closer look at it. And there you go, as you can see it's a quite muscular looking board with a nice layout. The PCB is very robust and will not get bent easy at all. Now let's fly over the whole motherboard so you can get a good impression of it. As already said before, it's very muscular looking or however you may want to call it. You immediately notice that's a high-end board. The unique color scheme may not be everyone's taste and I believe it's hard to find matching components that match the color scheme of this board. But for the people that like the military look, well, they will like this board. Big heavy heatsinks are used to cool everything down and the design as well as the overall layout seems to be done very well. The name of this motherboard tells you the chipset that is used, which is the flagship 990FX chipset from AMD. The AM3 Plus socket is used and that means this board fully supports the second generation of AMD FX processors as well as the first generation and older Phenom 2 or Athlon 2 CPUs that are using the AM3 socket. It's all backwards compatible. As for the memory, you get 4 DIMMs that support the dual channel technology. The maximum amount of memory you can install on this board are 32GB. The supported frequencies go all the way up from 1066 to 1866 MHz. Now let's move on to the SATA ports. You get a total of 8. These 6 brown ones are SATA 6 gigabit per second and run off the AMD SB950 Southbridge. The two grey ones are CD6 gigabit per second too, but run off the third party S Media controller. But let's get to the expansion slots. You get a total of 4 PCI Express 2.0 x16 slots. This one, the first, runs at x16. The second one at x4, third is unknown, and the last one runs at x8. This port supports a 3-way SLI or crossfire configuration. For two-way use the first two slots. For a three-way use the first, third and fourth slot. Make sure you don't use the black one. Then there is also a single PCIe 2.0 X1 slot for expansion cards, such as sound cards for example. 
last but not least a single standard PCI slot. Now I'll show you the fan headers and their locations. Here's the CPU fan header, the CPU optional fan header, the chassis fan 3 header near the memory slots, the chassis fan 1 header beside the USB 3.0 header, and last but not least, the chassis fan 2 and 4 fan headers right there. So you get a good amount of fan headers on this board. But let's continue with the headers and down here are the front panel headers, the COM header, also known as serial port, two USB 2.0 headers, a TPM and a TB header, not to forget the front panel HD audio header. Near the memory slots there also is a USB 3.0 header. Right beside the memory slots is a tiny button called Mem OK button. This one allows you to patch memory issues and will ensure memory boot compatibility if there are any issues. Right beside the front panel headers there is a similar looking button but this is the direct key button. By pressing this one you will boot directly into the BIOS without having to press the delete key on your keyboard. This is the standby power LED and will light up green. The 24 pin power connection is right here in its ideal location as well as the 8 pin ATX volt volt power connection up there. This motherboard uses an 8 plus 2 phase power design to ensure best power delivery and stability of the CPU, especially when overclocking. High quality components are used which should increase the lifespan. The 990FX chipset is cooled down very well as well as the VRMs, so this should definitely help with overclocking. And the SB950 Southbridge is also cooled down by a separate heatsink, which somehow doesn't seem to match the design of the other two heatsinks. The two on the top are connected with a heat pipe by the way. The Realtek ALC892 HD audio codec will take care of the audio playback and recording. This chip of course isn't as good as a separate sound card, but for most people it should be good enough. Now let's move on to the back panel. There's your PS2 comma port, two USB 2.0 ports, an optical SPDIF output, two USB 3.0 ports, two ESATA 6 gigabit per second ports, four USB 2.0 ports, two more USB 3.0 ports, an USB BIOS flashback button, a gigabit LAN port, two more USB 2.0 ports, and the 7.1 audio that is powered by the Realtek ALC892 audio codec. The last part of this review would be the BIOS. The ASUS UE5 BIOS is used and I'm currently in the easy mode for the very basic tasks and monitoring. But I'll now switch to the advanced mode. Right away I have to say you get lots of options in this BIOS and everything is categorized very well but not as good as MSI does it. You can either navigate with your mouse or keyboard. The mouse is very responsive in this BIOS and that's something many UE5 BIOSes lack at the time of this video. I also tried overclocking with this board and it worked out perfectly. The voltage settings, the calibration and so on just work perfectly. No issues whatsoever. The overclock was very stable too. So the Asus Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 is a great choice for the price. You simply get what you pay for, if not more. Great performance is offered. Overclocking works very well, no complaints whatsoever here and the UE5 BIOS also is very responsive. It's great to see so many features actually. 3-way crossfire and SLI is also supported and you get lots of USB connections. 6 of USB 3.0 when including the internal connection. The design, the way this board looks like and the color scheme may or not be everyone's taste but for me it looks pretty good. So long story short, buy this motherboard if you want a long warranty of 5 years and great performance. The price actually isn't very high considering the performance and features that are offered. You should definitely buy this board if you want to overclock and or run a 2 or 3 way crossfire or SLI configuration. Pros are good price performance ratio, great performance, good layout, good amount of features, don't like the responsive UE5 bias and the good design. For the cons you can only say one thing, the color scheme may not be everyone's taste, but other than that it's a great motherboard and I give it a 9 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.